Nice. So that's about it on that. Uh, Everett, is it time? I think it's time. I think like the, the, we've 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 kept it off long enough uh, because oh, today, uh, you know what? Here about I'll just take it from here. You can stew a little bit um, because today the pools and the host cities for the Volleyball Nations League 2022 were announced. Now, thankfully, it won't be the same marathon that it was last year, all in Rimini, and we're going to be traveling a little bit, a lot less than what we're used to. And, and it's only going to be three weeks of uh, Nations League. Each pool, each week is going to contain eight teams. Now, obviously, we don't have enough time for each team to play each other. All, otherwise, you'd be playing two matches a day, multiple, you know, seven matches a week. It, it, it would just be way, way, way too much. So um, the host pools for the men's side, week one, Brasilia in Brazil, Ottawa, Canada. So if you are watching this right now, if you're a member of the Discord, we are going to be, hands down, we're going to be doing a meetup. Love the fact that they're bringing the men's back to Ottawa. Um, we're going to the Philippines. Interesting. So, Fia Bulgaria, the only European stop for the Nations League. Bit weird. Um, Osaka, Japan, and Kemerova, Russia uh, on the men's side. Important to note, only one European stop, and more importantly, no USA stop for the men's side. If American fans want to watch the uh, U.S. men play in the U.S. this year. Tough titty. It's not going to happen. Uh, you can't even come up to Ottawa and watch because they, they didn't even like the the. Yeah, they didn't even put the USA in Ottawa. They, they didn't even put the USA in Ottawa, which always oh. like which always pulls really really well. Um, that being said, uh, I know you're not excited, but man, am I ever excited? Like, look at the teams that are going to be coming to Ottawa. Yeah, are you going to come hang out? Because like it's gonna yes. be, it's going to be a good one. We'll get, yeah, we'll get I'll be there. I've I, I'm I'm going to try to get the FIVB to bring me up to commentate that in person. That would be unbelievable. Yeah, the teams are good. So I, before before I really get into why this pisses me off so much, um, to explain a couple things about the format, because I was just as confused as you all. I'm like, a pool of eight, how on earth are they going to pull that off? So what they're doing is they're having each city host from a Tuesday to a Sunday. That's six days of matches. Each of those teams that's there, and there's eight teams there, each of those teams will play four matches in six days. So that schedule is pretty reasonable. It's not every day, which uh, which would be unreasonable. Which but is normal for the FIVB. It w- which yeah. So so that that is okay. The scheduling part is totally fine with me. Tuesday to Sunday, and then they have a full like week and a half before they have to play again. So they get to travel. That that the scheduling is okay from that standpoint. Each eight teams that are in one spot, each team will play four matches against four of the other teams. So just because you're in a team's pool on a given weekend doesn't mean you're necessarily going to play them. And if like some teams are in the same pool multiple times throughout the tournament and they'll probably only play them once. I don't, uh, I don't see anybody playing a team more than once because, well, there's 16 teams and each one will only play 12 matches. So they, there'll be three teams that each team won't play against. Um, So that's a little bit weird with how the math works out. What I do like is that the top eight teams are making the finals this year. So they've reformatted the way they're doing the finals. We don't know where the finals are. They, they actually just like opened the the bidding for what what cities are going to host the men's and women's finals. Um, if you if you're holding out hope that the U.S. is going to host that, you're crazy. Probably that not. Will, no, that will never happen. And I'll get to that in a second. But uh, eight teams in the finals will be better because like before it was six teams and they did this stupid pointless like pool play thing that nobody cared about. So now they'll just straight up do a single elimination with eight teams. That'll be better. The, that, I hate the sixteen thing that we do in volleyball. That was it's dumb. The dumbest yeah. thing ever. That's dumb. So, so we're not doing that in VNL anymore. Just an eight team bracket. That's better. That's the end of the good news. Unless you're Canadian here. So, that was that. To, that was the men pools. Let's let's jump into the women's pools well, real quick here. All right. This this is where it, this is where it really gets me. Oh man. All right. First weekend. USA women are in Shreveport, Bossier City, USA. Beats me. <laughs> I mean, hey, I know we make in Canada we make a lot of fun for uh Americans not really knowing Canadian geography, but I'm gonna take the L in this one because I have no idea, not even the foggiest <laughs> idea of where Shreverport, Shre- Shreveport, I don't know how you pronounce that, Bossier City, USA. Uh then moving on to Ankara, Turkey. Uh that's a good one. Back to Brasilia. So two weekends in a row in Brasilia. Um, Pase City, um, Pase City in the Philippines. Obviously, interesting the fact that the Philippines is getting two Nations League weekends and they don't have a team competing in the event. Uh, week number three, we are going to 
Canada. We are going to beautiful Calgary. Um, That's awesome. It it is awesome. It's gonna be God. it's gonna be fantastic. The women's the women's national team is gonna be playing in Calgary, and then finally the last uh, one is in Ufa, Russia. And actually, you should come up to uh, Calgary as well because the USA will be playing there. And you know, it, it was funny enough in 2020 we had planned to have the men play in uh, Calgary and the women play in Ottawa, which was just ridiculous. It, it was once again, like mind blown of why we are doing that. It, Volleyball Canada had made that choice considering that the, a, the men had played at, like train in Ottawa, our home based in Ottawa had already played nations league two or three years in a row in Ottawa. So the, the people like the, everyone knew about it. There was some sort of continuity. And then they're like, yeah, we're just going to switch this for no reason. We're just, we're just going to switch it up. Um, but instead, they've they've made the right choice here. The men are going to be back in Ottawa. Their women are going to be in Calgary. There's more Nations League happening. If you're if you're if you're going to even don't even try to go in on your country's volleyball governing body in this case because they ended up doing the right thing here. Canada got a, a city to host it for both men's and women's, and I think they picked the right city for both. Good for Canada. USA volleyball should be ashamed of themselves. This is absolutely embarrassing. First of all, there's no men's there's no men's pool, no no USA men's volleyball at all in the summer in the United States. That's absurd. They've been coming to Chicago for 10 years. I go to those games every single year and it's literally free attendance. You know that since the USA volleyball is terrible at marketing events, they're just horrible, that they're not going to be able to market to American fans and actually sell any tickets. So, they've actually found success with scheduling the right weekends and getting European teams to come in here who have massive populations in Chicago, and they'll sell out every time, dude. I've been to Poland matches against the U.S. in Chicago, and I, as an American fan, have been outnumbered 50 to 1. Chicago has the second largest Polish population of any city in the world. That's including every city in Poland. Warsaw is the only city in the world that has more Polish people than Chicago. If you bring the VNL, the men's VNL to Chicago and Poland is there instant sellouts for every day of the competition so that's ridiculous but what's even worse is if you're if the usa volleyball is gonna bother actually hosting a weekend i would rather than not host anything than take us to shreveport bossier city louisiana this is in the state of louisiana i did not know this Uh, i would not forget i would not blame anybody in the world for not knowing this great american city of shreveport bossier city in the Louisiana. I have no idea where this city is. It is known for nothing. I looked into it today. They have one of the highest crime rates in America. The near, their nearest international airport is Dallas. It's three hours away, which apparently is a qualification for being able to host a weekend of this tournament is having a local international airport, which they don't. I have no idea what's going on here. So this city hosted a, one of the Olympic qualifying pools in August of 2019 when USA, they played like Kazakhstan and like some really bad teams and got an Olympic like got an Olympic berth no problem. The attendance of the three the three USA matches at that tournament was about four thousand people, if that combined. That's in, no uh per match. Oh, okay. So there was one that was I'll like there for a second. two that were just under four thousand, then one was that just above four thousand. But that's that's embarrassing. You should be putting ten thousand people in the stands. That that should be the goal for a tournament like this. You have the reigning Olympic gold medalists, the Olympic gold medalists of the United States women's volleyball. They're the best national team on the planet. Clearly, the best national team on the planet. They're playing at home. It's the most popular women's and girls sport in the country by far. We're about to talk about the NCAA tournament. It has 64 teams. Like NCAA women's volleyball is a massive deal. Girls volleyball, women's volleyball is a big deal in the United States. And you have the reigning Olympic gold medalists playing at home. And you, USA Volleyball, the organization, this is on you. You're sending them to Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana? Get real, dude. What is? I, I don't understand where where the, the the money trail of that. That makes no sense. This is clearly money motivated. But who in Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana, is going to pay USA Volleyball any amount of money to actually make this worth their while? I don't understand this at all. This is an embarrassment for USA Volleyball to put their national team on the world stage in this place. It has no place in this tournament. It is shameful 
that USA Volleyball has put this foot, foot forward to host the women's there, of all places, and to not host the men's, while the Philippines, who doesn't even have a team in either competition, gets to host both. That makes no sense. The Philippines is not a wealthy country. There's, It's not a money thing here. USA Volleyball just refuses to put the, their appropriate amount of effort and capitalize on the opportunity to have the national team play at home in a real, like, professional international setting and they're not going to bother with the men because they don't care about men's volleyball they, which is very obvious if you live in the u.s and try and follow the men's coverage and they're going to send the reigning olympic champions of the women's to shreveport bustier city louisiana you're right it doesn't make any sense especially when you have dallas places like dallas that you could host it maybe austin hell somewhere in la you know, somewhere in, in California. Bring Send them it to Omaha. The, the state of Nebraska is obsessed with volleyball. They love University of, University of Nebraska women's volleyball. They pack that arena with 5,000 fans every single match without fail. You could double that easily if you brought the national team there. They did that a couple of years ago. They brought a, like a national team scrimmage to Nebraska, and it was awesome. Do that. Go to any Big Ten arena. Go to West Lafayette. Go to Purdue, where I went to school. One of the best volleyball crowds in, in the nation. What are we doing here? I don't even know where Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana is. Nobody knows where that is. Nobody's going to fly to Dallas and drive three hours to go watch the national team. It's not worth it. It, it makes no sense, and it's I, I think it's insulting and embarrassing. You're you're not wrong, right? Like I I, I think it. I I don't even know what to say about that, to be honest. Right? Like you have so many different options uh, of where to go in the the beautiful United States, right? one of the greatest countries in the world, right? And you choose to go to one of the places with the highest crime rate where, you know <laughs> what? Three hours away from the nearest airport. Like, I it's, just don't get it. But like, you know what? I, I I don't get it either, but it's completely on brand for volleyball. It is on brand. And the people who control volleyball in North America, right? It It's... They are, and like I've seen it from having worked at uh, Volleyball Canada. I've worked with USAV before. I've seen the type of people um, that work behind the scenes, and quite often, it's very, it's very rarely people who actually care about volleyball, and it's all people who care about sport business, but not the good ones, right? Because they're all be taken up by you know the other sports. It's always like the middle of the pack people, and yeah, like I. I it's just a bad look for the FIVB. It's a bad look for the USAV. It's a bad look for the sport as a whole. I know for a fact that the FIVB is very, very, very unhappy about having to go back to this location. I know that for a fact. I, I they certainly won't drop the source or get, give any detail on that. But th this this is not not it not a popular decision. Um, and I, if if I get like if I get blackballed or canceled or avoided by the USA Volleyball organization, I don't care. I think they probably know who I am at this point. They totally copied the European Volleyball Show and did it worse. Um, they have the USA Volleyball Show, which is a badly hosted podcast. Whatever. I, I think I might be on USA Volleyball's radar. And if I and if they don't want anything to do with me after this, fine. Because this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. You, the USA Volleyball organization, have embarrassed United States Volleyball by doing this for VNL. This is on you. It, it is up to the national governing bodies to bid the FIVB for cities to host this tournament. This is not an FIVB choice. Like you, you can't blame the FIVB for like choosing a random city in America to do this. It's not their fault. This is what USA Volleyball presented to them, and this well, is what was. And it, it, it's it's embarrassing. It is completely out. The people in Colorado Springs, USA Volleyball, whoever is on that board, whoever is involved in making this decision burn that organization to the ground and burn that boardroom to the ground and just put and put new people in there who like me have never heard of Shreveport, Bossier city, Louisiana, and volleyball would be a better place. I just hate, I, I can't express to you guys, listeners, viewers, how much this, this annoys me. I I've been, I've been to so many of these USA men's matches in person. I've traveled to them as I could. They've, they've come to Chicago. They've been largely pretty convenient for me. They've been awesome. They've been electric. They're so much fun to go to and watch in real life. They're absolutely tremendous. The only way that you are going to actually get a foothold on volleyball in the United States is to somehow pull off great in-person events. That is the only way. 
The U.S. is the greatest sports country in the world, by far the greatest sports country in the world, but there's too much going on at the top. The average sports fan does not have the bandwidth to go out of their way to consume volleyball unless they're really, really, really passionate about it. If you want to get anybody other than the extremely passionate fan into volleyball, you need to have great in-person events in the United States to hook the viewers. That's the only way. And they're now, completely dropping the ball on this with, with this pitiful effort of the BNL. It's embarrassing. Now, my question on the men's side, do you think no VNL on the men's side is a repercussion for how poorly the uh, 2019 VNL finals were attended in Chicago? Because yes. if you guys remember back to the 2019 VNL finals in Chicago, everyone was talking about, oh, they got the stadium seating, blah, blah, blah. It's all black in the crowd and the lights are only on the court. That was because they didn't there have nobody there. There was nobody there, and the FIVB didn't want to show how little that event was attended. To me, that, that is, there's a direct correlation to not being able to get butts in seats for a VNL finals to being able to host uh, a, a week like this, especially when there's only three opportunities. Are you going to give it to the people who just you know couldn't sell out? Whereas Ottawa has consistently been one of the top attendance places for four matches like we're we're getting four five six seven thousand people at you know consistently at these vnl matches so that is not an fivb failure to market that 2019 chicago finals it is a usa volleyball failure that is them once again dropping the ball on that i was at that tournament i was there for the finals on sunday um our buddy dan dan manili was there A, a lot of people in the discord were there they made the trip to chicago for that and you're absolutely right it was dark in the crowd because the FIV, FIVB was ashamed of how few people were there. Except when Poland was playing, they had the, the classic Polish crowd, but the Brazilian matches were not well attended. Even the Iranian matches, who usually do really well on American soil, not good at all. And the American matches were the worst of all. It was absolutely embarrassing. And that was USA Volleyball's failure to market that event. There is a massive volleyball community in Chicago. I am a huge part of it. I live here. I, I play volleyball twice a week. There are hundreds and hundreds of people that's all they do on the weekends is they want to play volleyball the failure to market and get those people to get their butts and seats at that arena with the best volleyball on the planet literally in their backyard and usa volleyball was unable to make that happen i'm not surprised at all that they are not hosting men's again i just don't understand it philosophically even volleyball canada who has so many similar shortcomings have figured out how to at least do an event like to beat it to death with with consistency in order to put butts and seats in Ottawa. And it's it's been that you're right. That's been a good event. Every time I've seen anything hosted in Ottawa, it's been well attended and it's been fun in in the arena. It's just so bad. It's, some of these USA matches, like the only one that I was at that didn't have a great crowd was we hosted VNL with Canada, Japan, and China, and they just didn't get lucky with the That's pool that they had. Tough, tough for the like the international crowds in Chicago because you don't have Poland, Serbia, Bulgaria, some of the ones that are that are guaranteed to pack the house for you. When players were going, I was there. I went to all three matches that the USA played. When players were going back to serve in that gym, it was dead silent, like literally dead silent. It was like a tennis match. It was embarrassing. It was completely embarrassing the way that supposed USA volleyball in person fans attended and behaved and received that level of volleyball it was criminal it was so sad and i'm not surprised that the fivb like i don't know if usa volleyball isn't bothering to bid on it because they're not confident they could do any better but even if they did i don't blame the fivb for saying yeah like forget it You, you can't throw a good event now now my i think this this also leads into a bigger question why do we have a vnl realistically we like and i've talked about this before but no other sport has a yearly competition like this. It's not in basketball. It's not in hockey. It's not in soccer. You know, it, any of the major international team sports, they don't have an, uh, 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 a national or, you know, a yearly competition like this, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter for the Olympics. It doesn't matter for the world championships. It, it matters for world ranking, but I mean, only for those, those top teams. Like, why do we continuously have this? Like, if we look at this, the travel schedule for this event, it's it's pretty gnarly, right? Like, you have to... Yeah, it's um, significant. Right? Like, like if, if I take the Canadian team, for example, we're going to be the USA in one week, travel to the Philippines for another week, and then we're back in Calgary. We're literally going around the world. And once again... No private jets. That like all of these players are going to be an economy. All these players are going to be eating shitty airport food, and right, like like it, it's 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 just battled around the the VNL. 
is a worthless competition. I swear to God, you get rid of the VNL. We let our athletes rest up a little bit. More, more emphasis is put on the world championships, which, by the way, next year is a world championship year. More emphasis right. is put on the club season, right? Let's get rid of the Nations League. It's useless. All it does is drain like like I can guarantee even though Ottawa and and Calgary are both probably going to be well attended volleyball Canada is still going to lose money on these weekends right I guarantee and, that's and, true. and and a lot of the part of that is because of the fees that they have to pay to the FIVB how much money they have to give to FIVB delegates who come in and do absolutely jack shit throughout throughout the entirety of the week right so let's just get rid of the VNL let's let our players relax and rest and sleep for once you know, see their family, and then let's put the emphasis on the bigger events like the World Championships, like the Olympics, and like the Continental Championships. So I'm not. To, I, there's a lot of that that I agree with. I don't agree with abolishing the VNL completely. I, I agree with. So Ronnie brought it up in the chat. It's because international volleyball is what people want to see, and I agree. Um, I care. I care more about watching the national teams than I care about the club season. It's just what I what I was exposed to first, and I have a team that I can actually root for. So that certainly helps. They're, but they've got to do something about this. They've got to make it matter for some reason more than just world ranking points. There's got to be berths in some other tournaments on the line, maybe an Olympic bid, maybe a world like world championships by to the second. I, I don't know. I don't know how you can make this tournament matter more. If you're going to play it, you've just got to figure out how to do it better. And that's, that's worldwide. I'm not just roasting USA Volleyball anymore, even though they should still be embarrassed of themselves, not letting them off the hook. Um, if anyone, by the way, is wondering why there's two pools in Russia, even like a, a pool on each side in Russia, even though the world championships are there the next year, it's probably basically a trial run for those world championships. They're going to put a similar-ish formatted event in Russia to gauge the level of engagement and attendance and just kind of see how it goes before the whole world descends on Russia later in the year. I don't disagree but also, with that. But people in Russia care about volleyball. They do. Right. Like you volleyball watch, country. You watch the Russian the Russian Super League and you watch their streams, and they might have the best in-game production of anyone, right? Even even more so than the Intel in, in the Italian league. Like, I agree. I think they're got, in arena. The in arena in person experience is the best in Russia of any domestic league in the world. Hundred hundred percent, right? So like I like I'm all for bringing matches to Russia. And hell, like even though we, we were hating on the Philippines. Like, have you ever seen those clips? Awesome on fans, awesome Tremendous fans. Like, fans. like you, you, we've seen clips of of like U eleven matches being sold out with thousands of fans. Like, they get more people for U eleven matches in the Philippines than they do for for um, you know, than we do here, right? Um, yeah, I'm really upset that the USA men are not going to get to go to the Philippines because they'd be treated more like superstars there than they would in their own home country. And that's an absolute guarantee. Uh, the women's, I think the, the USA women do get to go to the Philippines. Yes, they do. Yeah, There's with us as well. The, Filipino fans root for American national teams for some reason. They a lot of them really gravitated towards the USA women this summer because they won Olympic gold. Those those events will be tremendous. Again, that is not a wealthy country. The purposes of those events is not to make money for anybody. They're going to put a ton of butts in seats. They're going to have fantastic crowds, and the players are going to get to play in an atmosphere they actually deserve for those weekends in the Philippines. So I like that. I know it's confusing because they don't actually have teams in the events, but I, I know for a fact the atmospheres that they're going to have, both men's and women's, when they host them in the Philippines, will probably be the best in the tournament, except for maybe the Turkish women. They're, they're insane for Turkey on the women's side. That'll be fun. Dude, I I just I just don't know I don't know what more I what what else there is that I could, that I could, that we can possibly do in the U.S. to to fix this problem. It's like a downward. It's like a plane about to crash, and there's nothing you can do to fix it. It's embarrassing that the USA Volleyball Organization is putting this foot forward, and though the rest of the world is looking at the pool releases today, and they're like they've probably heard of what three or four American cities, and uh, even. 95% of Americans have never heard of Shreveport, Bossier City. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. I think for me is that, like, there, there's two sides of it. First of all, I'm very happy that there's that much volleyball going to be happening in Canada this year. Um, you know, Calgary is going to be great. We actually just announced, uh, Ben Saxon, former beach player, just announced that the, the Ca Calgary Open, where we're going to be hosting, it's not an FIVB event, but another actual real volleyball tournament. So Calgary is going to be um, a great 
plays for volleyball overall this year. It's just there's there's two sides of it to me for in Canada. First of all, very happy that we are getting two weekends, but it's also frustrating because I know that so much more could have been done, right? And so much more could be done. And it just like if we had done that, if if we had taken the steps to to properly promote our teams and, and to properly market these events, how much better could they be? So I mean, I'm hoping that maybe some things have have changed at Volleyball Canada and that we're probably going to promote these events, but I'm 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 also slightly worried. Yeah, it's it's a good sign that the the federation and then just in general you are having top level events in the borders of like in, in Canadian borders. Ottawa is a great one. Calgary is a good one. Uh, if they could bring one to Toronto, I know it would be expensive, but that would be even better. Maybe that's down the road, but just the fact that they're hosting real events in Canada is huge. I don't. I would rather. I would legitimately rather the USA Volleyball not host at all than host in Shreveport, Bossier City. And I'm not kidding about that. I I will definitely try and come to Ottawa for VNL. I would much rather go to Calgary for VNL than I would go to Shreveport, Bossier City. I'd rather go to the Philippines. I'd rather go to Brazil. I literally Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana is dead last on my list of places in this VNL hosting list that I would want to go. And I live in the United States. It's it's really really sad. You know, I mean, what we could do is make a fun a fun uh, little trip of it. We'll go to Calgary. 20 what is it the 28th the july 23rd spend a couple days in calgary maybe we go to banff and then go back to calgary july 8th to 17th is the greatest show on the earth uh the calgary stampede have you ever been to the stampede you've ever heard I've of the stampede never heard of this this the calgary stampede is like the biggest it's a big cowboy show so oh, man. It, and it's absolutely <laughs> massive it's a, it's a big party you've got you know like the the bull riding and the bull wrangling and the chuck wagon races and it's it's the biggest like outdoor show uh for cowboys in all of north america then that's it's a great party so i think maybe you should come down well we'll go to the matches i'll take you to the mountains afterwards we'll go hang out in the rockies for a little bit uh i'd much rather do that than go to shreveport boss your city dude speaking of great outdoor party weekends that happen to be volleyball themed while pack a boat ride is a thing that's two hours from chicago in the middle of the summer when is that this I'm, year i'm it's, I'm, it's it's the second weekend of July. Put it on your calendars. It's it's the same weekend every single year. Okay, um, so then we we it'll be the same weekend as uh, the finals here. Okay, maybe not maybe not the finals, but yeah, hell yeah, like sign me up. Let's go. Let's go do the Bopaco boat ride. Boat ride. Yeah, boat rides right right before the women's VNL finals. It's like two weeks before the men's. They could they could put the national team in Milwaukee and they would sell it out if they if they put it right. If they put something VNL in Milwaukee right around the time of boat ride, they would sell it out because every the whole volleyball world in the U.S. is already in Wisconsin. Mm, anyway. But it's, it's tough just, though, right? Because like the boat ride is going to be going on during the weekend, right? And then the event's going on during the weekend. And if you're going to decide between going to watch volleyball and play volleyball, like I remember there was a it's a Tuesday to Sunday event. These are six days of volleyball going on. You, you like go go to Alpac and play on Saturday, come back for Sunday for the finals. That's what I did when it was in Chicago in 2019. I literally came back from Alpac the morning of and went immediately to the the gym to go to the VNL finals. Anybody in the Midwest could have done that, but they didn't. Like nobody even knew it was happening. That's that was the embarrassing. This, this is the. Do you know how many volleyball events I've been to, and people from the area will be like, "No one knows this is happening. No one knows this is going down." And then exactly. you talk to the organizers, like, "Well, we sent out an email blast." Literally, there was one time I remember we were doing. We were hosting World League qualifiers in 2013, and Volleyball Canada was getting me to call like the Slovakian embassy because we were playing Slovakia. And that's how we were going to promote the event. And I was like, <laughs> we're not even promoting to the local clubs. We're not even promoting to the local leagues. And you want me to call the Slovakian embassy? This was also the same summer where there was a, we were hosting an event, a Pan Am Cup, and there was a traffic jam out in front. And they had me go out with flyers and give out flyers in the traffic jam. Like <laughs> literally, these are things that I have done to get people in volleyball matches. And like, like I have no idea what, what goes on inside of some in some of these these event organizers' heads in volleyball? It's like they've never organized an event before, and they have no idea that marketing and communications are a real thing. It's really ridiculous. Uh, Blair Lambert in the chat, who's very well connected. Blair, what's up, dude? He says, "I talked to somebody formerly of USA Volleyball. It's very difficult to find cities and venues in the summer that meet requirements with less than a year in advance of prepared time." I believe that. I, I that totally makes sense. So don't do it at all. Don't don't send the national team to Shreveport, Boston City. Just don't do it. There's literally no point. None, none whatsoever.